So Jim, I sent you, uh, I sent it to the hardware map that is actual, it's more accurate than the, than the one on the website. So, uh, work. so, so we'll cover today uh, the uh, OCS manageability overview. Uh, but uh, here is the, uh, go a little bit over the, uh, what's going to be covered today. So it will be management overview from 1, 1 o'clock, and then 2 o'clock, so it will be 45 minutes, and then we'll take a break. And then 2 o'clock, we'll have the, Amir Michael is going to cover the uh, monitoring hardware naked. Uh, that, and that will be the uh, hardware monitor, monitoring. And then the second session at 2.25, it's uh, Redfish demo and update. So when uh, Jeff, uh, author from DMTF, and uh, Arina Salvan will, will uh, co present that one. And then we'll have a break, 10 minute break, and then we'll come back at 3 p.m. We'll have uh, it's health monitoring and anal analytics. Uh, this is uh, it's going to be focused on second hard drives. And uh, Christian uh, from Seagate will, will present that. Uh, and then at 3.25, uh, Hari Ramachandran from S4H going to talk about the open PMC architecture. And then we'll take a 10 minute break. So you see the rhythm. So 10 minute breaks are always 3, uh, 2, 250, 350, uh, 1. And then we'll come back at 4 o'clock. And, and we'll, we'll cover the uh, OCP multi-node uh, discussion, and and then and then 425 will uh, will have the uh, Goldman Sachs hardware monitoring agent uh, discussion. So they have this is a Goldman Sachs uh, internal tool that we use, and so we get to see how it gets done at scale. And then uh, finally the last one, which would be one hour long, and this is really um, more of an ecosystem discussion, uh, not discussion presentation. So uh, we will talk about enabling uh, open uh, the, uh, open, uh, the uh, open stack on on OCP hardware, and it will be detailed discussion. How do you do uh, then method provisioning? How do you do imaging, uh, monitoring, and so on? So and Alessandro uh, uh, will we'll go through that. So that's a quick overview of today. Uh, so any questions? Okay, so let's start the uh, management overview. I'm live. Okay, so uh, OCS, uh, in uh, last year this time, we actually in March last time, I think, uh, I think around, it's February, right? And so last, last year we presented OCS V1, uh, and that was the uh, essentially the first time uh, we uh, OCS went, went public. So we covered uh, we went through great detail into the uh, chassis management uh, in V1. Um, in Paris, a few months ago, around October, we, a uh, well, little bit more than that, we covered the, we published OCS V2. So what went from, uh, what is the difference between V1 and V2? So um, essentially, in terms of the chassis, it's the same. Uh, there is minor changes, and uh, we can we can cover that. So we added a little bit of signal on the back plane, but the overall it's a 12 u 12 u 19 inch chassis. Uh, it's uh, um, it's shared power, shared fans. Nothing changed. The same same way, uh, and we can uh, sort up to 24 blades. It's at uh, one u half wide blades. Uh, we uh, support dual sockets, and this, here's the change. So we went from V1 versus V2. We went from the, um, the Sandy Bear from the, 
from a uh, the, the Intel Intel Are you we went from Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge into a Haswell Broadwell uh, architecture. Right, so it's a, it's a new CPU architecture uh, there. Um, uh, in terms of the JBOD, the JBOD is the same. No change to the JBOD is practically the same. Uh, uh, and and uh, in terms of chassis management, so we, uh, we have the chassis manager itself. Hardware-wise, not change. The software that runs on it. It changed, and we'll cover we'll cover the, the, the changes that happened there. Um, okay. So this is yeah the summarize of the change. So we went to Intel E5 2600, and that's the Haswell based processor. Um, uh, yeah, we added more memory, uh, so we support 16 gigs. Uh, the previous one supports 16 gig, but uh, we, add, we went from 12 slots to a slot, slot um, We went from 10G to 40G at Nix. Um, and we also support 12, 12, uh, 12 uh, gigabit tasks, not on the JBOD side. So, and it really doesn't make any sense on the JBOD because it's 10 hard drives, whether it's 12G or, or 6G, you have enough bandwidth. Uh, it's more of the server side, you can pull 12 gigabit uh, HPAs. Uh, on the chassis, um, and you will see if you go, uh, it's tomorrow, uh, tomorrow I think, uh, 4 o'clock, 4.15, it's, uh, we introduced new PSU. So the PSU is now actually, it's a PSU plus, plus UPS. So it's a shared, it's a shared PSU plus battery system. So you don't need any centralized or, or uh, top of rack uh, UPS. So it, it's a, it's one, it's a combo. Um, and we went from 1400 watts to a uh, to a 1600 watt PSU as well. Um, yeah, and then there is hardware we added PCI Express um, by 16 PCI Express on the on the, on the back. So this is essentially a summary of the previous uh, stuff on the chassis. So, yeah, 40 gig, 1600 watts. So as you know, uh, our chassis is, is a really a shared, shared, shared chassis. So uh, we have six fans. There's actually the fans also. It's a little versus V1. The fans are. Um, they support more cooling, so it's a faster fan. Instead of 6,000 RPM, 6,500, 7,000 RPMs, which means, which means you can put faster uh, and, uh, and high, higher power CPUs. And that's what we did. So we moved from 95 to 120 watts. Uh, the, the PSUs also, uh, and this is maybe, um, I'm not sure how many know the tech. This is too much electrical stuff here, so we are managing with you guys. But, one of the side effects of, or one of the reasons why we moved to 600 watts is to be able to have 20 millisecond hold up power. And lots of uh, power supplies actually will be surprised. It's like five millisecond. Now, why the 20? So first of all, it's the standard. It's called a or something. So anybody who knows power supply is, is, is a kind of uh, hold that power. Hold. The reason is, uh, if you have in the data center, if you have very periodic brief glitch in power, for example, like, when you're outside or whatever, and you have a loss of power for you for a cycle, literally, right? So it's a 50 the power we use it is uh, 50 hertz, uh, yeah, it's 50 cycles, whatever. So uh, you should be able to withstand a loss of power or a uh, fluctuation in power or abnormal power behavior for a small period of time, one cycle, which is 20 milliseconds. Uh, without that, if it's less than that, then you can actually small glitch, very brief glitch. You can lose the whole, you can lose the whole thing. And also, uh, switching from switching from PSUs to to batteries, it, it's also required that much. So um, it's kind of okay. Uh, how much you can switch power supply from a normal normal UPS to a, a battery? Twenty milliseconds seems to be kind of. 
put all of it in. Yeah. So the chassis is, as you can see, sidewalls, fans. Um, we have a notion of trays, so 12 trays if each tray holds two servers. Uh, and we have six PSUs and one chassis manager. Right? Uh, the chassis manager is the one that sits here. It's a small, it's a small, and I'll talk about it. It's really a small atom-based processor. Servers are sh shown here. So it's a uh, half U, I mean one U, half half width, um, and it's a brandly based uh, architecture, uh, two sockets, 120 watt. 16 DDR4 bibs. That's actually all that change, which is moving from DDR3 to DDR4. Uh, the storage, uh, we can go up to four uh, for a four three and a half inch hard drive. Uh, we support a choice of uh, four two and a half inch SSDs uh, or or a uh, eight PCIe Gen3. Uh, M.2. And actually tomorrow there is a presentation on the M.2 uh, cards. Laura uh, is here, she's sitting in the back. She, she will have demos, will have sticks. And you will see them actually, if you go to the demo uh, on the show floor, you can actually see them and touch them and you can see them actually running with the iometer, with uh, some I.O. performance tools. Um, We moved in terms of I/O. Uh, we had, as I said again, we have 40, nic, 40 gig NICs instead of 10 gig NICs, and we added a on uh, the tray back plane, which is all the way the back to the of the tray. We added a by 16 uh, PCIe uh, PCIe uh, port, and I'm not sure how many of you read the there were there were paper published on like using FPGAs. Um, that's that's where it sits. On, on the back. And the reason why it's on the tray is because of signal integrity. Uh, so if you want to move to, if you want to, well, uh, it's signal integrity because if you want to go 25 gig or you want a higher speed, like even 12 G per wire instead of, because even the next, the 40 gig next is actually 10 gigabit at, at the basic level, right? Four wires, 10 gig, 10 gigabit. If you want to go 25 gig or if you want to go even 20 gig SAS or you want to do anything, Higher than 10 gigabit, you will not be able to have that many disk continuity. I mean, you cannot go for MES, the motherboard, motherboard to the connector, the connector, and then there are so many connectors on, on the way. The only way to do it is to put it all the way to the back. So that's why we introduced that PCI slot. And uh, if you go to the, I mean, if you pass by the show, we show you, you will see the slot and we'll show you why. Uh, chassis management. So, uh, so unlike unlike the Facebook architecture, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm sure most of you are familiar with it, we introduce an notion of chassis manager, which is uh, we aggregate 24 blades on a chassis. Uh, we aggregate them one one entity, um, and the reason uh, for that is essentially it's uh, uh, it's it's uh, scalability and cost. If you don't do that, if you go sideband, uh, you have to have a link for, for every blade. And therefore, uh, you have to have a 1 gigabit uh, or, or whatever, or 40 gigabit, it depends on what you want. If 1 gigabit is more enough. Um, you have to have a, another manageability network, essentially. In our case, we don't have to do that because we are aggregating all the blades in one, uh, one port, essentially. So, and there are no wiring. There is no wiring whatsoever. So all the uh, all the wiring is actually done uh, on the chassis itself. It's hard, hard wiring, and it's slow. It's slow. It's slow communication path from the chassis manager to to, to the blades. So it's a uh, RS two thirty three. Yeah. Uh, the communication is IPMI. And actually, you would be surprised uh, for those who are uh, IPMI tours. Um, IPMI was defined for serial. You look at the stacks. Serial is assumed by default. However, if you go to the actual implementations, most of them don't implement, implement serial, which is kind of surprising. But it's in the stack, yeah. 
So, so most people do like uh, they do like MI, like the serial serial open lab, right? There is no serial open serial. Okay. So, so which is essentially if you want to do a direction serial direction, you have to go from serial to, to a serial. They don't do it, they, but they have serial open lab. So that's kind of the challenge that we went through. Uh, uh, I mean, it's very actually it's very easy to uh, you know, so because you don't do much. There is no much coding I mean, back in the back. You just do transfer. Because it's a physical connection, it's static, it's fixed, there is no one, I mean, it's really so. So, and I would say so, physical is point to point. The, the security is not a paramount, it's, it's a physical connection. Right? If you go TCP IP, yes, because you have packets flowing all over the network, then you have to be able to. No, so the authentic, I'll, I'll cover that. So keep in mind, so between the chassis and the blades, it's all. UI and it's true. So that's why I say you really, you really don't need authentication because it's already it's hidden from the user, right? But the, the chassis, yeah. So so the chassis manager exposes an interface, it's a REST API. There we do an icon. So it's, there is huge security limitation there. I mean, like it's, yeah. But from a physical point of view, between the between the chassis and the and the, and the blades, it's really point to point zero. Uh, so um, the chassis manager is low cost x86, uh, so it's an ARM based, uh, an ATOM based uh, processor. Uh, um, we implement REST API uh, for to interact with the chassis manager, uh, and we added on top of that the CLI. And the CLI is nothing but really a, a REST client. So natively it's REST, uh, but people ask for convenience, so we just go ahead and put a, a REST client on top of that. Now, the beauty of the REST client is actually a service. Uh, so you can actually run it from anywhere. You can just copy the REST client into another machine. As long as that machine has a has a connectivity, it can, can talk to the chassis manager. So you can run, you can run uh, your commands anywhere. You can even open serial session from anywhere. So, so it's a very handy tool. Uh, so what, uh, what do we provide in terms of management? So it's on off. I mean, essentially, it's power and it's, uh, power commands. Um, we provide uh, IPMI over serial and out of band communication. We do FAN. So the chassis manager uh, do hardware, hardware, uh, hard, hard, uh, hard, hard on off. Okay, and that's uh, so in data centers actually. Um, so through IPMI. You can go to the BMC and say turn on power, turn off power. What it does is actually it turn off power from the BMC tower, so the BMC stays alive. So and, and inside Microsoft we call it soft on off. Uh, some other people call it have different names for it. But what happens is sometimes if you have IPMI bugs and the BMC goes south, it doesn't work. So we need a clean shut off. Clean on off, and the clean only clean on off is really to just have the DC power. So we have, by the way, we have DC uh, all, all, all the way to the blade, so it's to cut the DC power from even pre BFC. So what we have, we have a small switch, essentially the you know, the chassis manager implement switch, uh, where we essentially just can turn on, turn on and off the power to the whole blade, including the BFC, and that's a clean clean provides a clean way to shut off. Uh, before that, pre this and anybody who wants to do one-off, they, they have to go and buy a smart PDU. Um, not smart PDU, smart, yeah, either smart PDU or smart power strip or whatever, some, some sort. And that costs almost like $100. So it's not, it's not cheap. Uh, so, as I said, so we control power on-off, we control fans, so the cooling. 
So the cooling is actually controlled by this chassis manager as well. So the chassis manager talks to every blade. He collects all the requirements of every blade in terms of how much power, uh, how much cooling it needs, and he will set up the RPM, the uh, RPM of the, the blade uh, of the fans. So if you go upstairs, for example, and uh, to the to the show floor, uh, you will see if you pull if you pull the CM, the fans will will go 100 percent and that's essentially a safe mechanism of implementing. If the CM is not there, then the fans, there's no way for the fans to understand which RPM you have to run at. You just go to 100%. Uh, PSUs, yeah. So the CM also manages the PSUs in terms of uh, uh, which, which PSU is on, which PSU is off. Uh, status, is it online or fine? Uh, error, status. So if your PSU is, is bad, you will see if it gets reported as bad. Uh, now, with the V2, we added battery uh, as well because of UPS functionality. So we'll see at least any whether the PSU is um, is uh, is uh, getting its power. It's essentially uh, on AC, AC power, or is on or on batteries. And if it's on batteries, it will tell you uh, whether it's charging or not and how much charge. The uh, software. So as I mentioned uh, earlier on in the morning. Uh, all the source code for the chassis manager is actually uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's published and it's on the uh, OCP GitHub. Okay, so all this essentially uh, what we talked about so far is has been in V1. Uh, what what what's new in V2? Uh, so as we uh, deploy V1 in production, uh, it's Tells you engineering the difference between engineering and, and, and engineers and user right uh, or operations right. So in V1 we said okay let's put the functionality in and who cares about user interface right? Yeah, everything is going to be scripted. Everything will be fine, handy, and then. Right? So small things like like being able to go up and down, like command history, right? So being able to type type a command and says oh, okay I want to execute that command again. So you go up the arrow up arrow key and hit enter again, right? So it really matters a lot, the operations. Right? Productivity, it's convenience, and it's 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 very huge reaction. Okay, reaction. How come we don't do that? Right? Okay, so we did that. So we added up, uh, we added command history, so you can go up and down. The other thing is uh, auto completion command. So because we said everything is going to be scripted, why why bother? Right? Like if you must type something, yeah, you go ahead and you type the whole command again, right? Now, if you have an 80 character command or string, I mean, a bunch of commands, right? Command and parameters, you have to retype it again. So it's a huge reaction to that as well. So, so what we did, we um, we added uh, command auto completion. So you can type one character, tap, 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 you see your command. Let's move on to the next uh, next uh, string in the command. So that 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 was a big help for operations. We uh, we added improved error handling, so that's more of the uh, internal operation of the chassis manager. So how essentially we unified its unified errors. We have a table lookup and it's streamlined and unified and uniform uniform error report. And it's really internal housekeeping. Uh, we added XML formatted logs, so uh, the chassis manager has two logs. One of them is um, kind of a journal box that keeps track of every command by, by the user. That's for security purposes. Um, and there is another log which is debugging log, which it dumps lots of information. So, and you can turn it on and off depending on what you want. But it dumps lots of information. So, if, if, especially for debugging, if you see some strange behavior or, or a bug, you can actually go and face it. And both logs are XML formatted. Uh, okay, so this is more of a user interface thing and, and uh, capabilities. The other uh, type of changes we added is Digi. So and and so this is more of also a lesson learned from uh, from uh, E1. When you uh, bring a thousands and thousands and thousands of machines and you put them in the data center, there is no way 
or it's not easy actually to go discovery through a Ethernet through TCIP or by Ethernet type of family, right? Uh, it's much easier to go through a AEG. And the point is because this AEG is really physical, it's point to point, you know, you're talking to this. Because at, at, at the, in the beginning, you don't even know what's in there. Uh, and there is no way to map that for this port is going to um, do this port here. Because you have switches in the middle and it's, it's very hard. And the switch is not configured here. Okay? So when, when you come to the rack, the switch inside the rack is not configured. So there is, you cannot make that correlation between ports and, and anything underneath the ports. The only way to make the correlation is through physical and interconnect, point to point interconnect, and serials with that. So Digi is, is a way uh, it's used for that particular. Thing. So, so they want to talk to uh, to the CN through a DG port because they know that DG is port one. It's talking. I know it's going to talk to this rack. Right. So, so what we did, we added actually a DG interface uh, to the to the chassis manager. Um, so you can execute commands. You can execute CLI commands through that DG. Uh, and then the other one, which is a, a, a crash, is a crash uh, card interface. So um, originally, uh, we said, OK, we have a CLI, we have REST API. Everybody can, can come through REST API and do debugging, right? It turns out it's actually more complicated than that. So um, you have lots of vendors. Some vendors don't have credentials. They don't have access to the network. So there are lots of common cases where the Network access is not for security reasons. So, uh, so the crash card is kind of a lot. I mean, somebody can come and put serial as two thirty two crash card, and you can actually um, interrogate the CM and dump the logs. Uh, the other change, which is um, uh, also in P two manageability, not CM necessarily, which is the deployment uh, operation. We call it operation two bit. So it's all those source code is donated. So the toolkit does a lot of things. It, it just does uh, it dumps all the logs, uh, can update firmware, uh, and there's a lot of diagnostics. Um, there is a talk tomorrow uh, also about this. So there's a uh, we go Joe Jones will go in great detail about that. The other challenge is uh, interoperability and, uh, and uh, QA test suites. So we actually, um, so when you, when you make hardware, uh, at the scale we do, uh, Microsoft or Facebook or Google or whatever, um, you buy tons of it. And you have multiple vendors in general. It's not a single vendor. So you will have uh, OEM1, OEM2, or OEM1, OEM2. How do you ensure that? Uh, the hardware they make is interoperable with it. You have, I have one chassis manager, but I have two motherboards. They may look the same, and actually they do look the same because they, they follow the same step. Okay? However, the BMC is not exactly the same. The firmware is not exactly the same. Uh, this is ODM1 firmware. This is ODM2 firmware, uh, firmware whether it's BIOS or BMC. Right? So you have to make sure that, that you have interoperable uh, lanes. That they interoperate with the, with, the, with the CM and the chassis manager. So, so we, what we did, we actually went through a great length to implement the test suite, uh, which, we, which we actually gave it to everybody. Um, we gave it to the ODMs, OEMs, anybody who cares. I said, make sure this test suite runs and it passes before you send the entry. Okay. And that's what it does. It's essentially in, it enforces certain quality, but also it enforces certain interoperability. Uh, so all the commands of the CM should pass, and not only uh, pass. So there is functional pass, and we also go. We have stress. So we go run a stress test when we have ten streams of commands on running on the CM, and we have a latency latency requirements. We have pass rate requirements. So it's a very strict, it's a very strict uh, type of test. And and that is by the way is also in the that's in the uh, GitHub. So, and that's actually what we want to give. That test suite, we're going to give it to the uh, uh, CNI, CNI uh, committee, and then that, that will be part of our uh, OCS interoperability. Yes. Okay.
So I don't, I don't want to go. Uh, this essentially um, what we decided to see on what are the guiding principles. So uh, as I said, I mentioned, I touched on scalability. Essentially, we have 24 blades, one board. That's that's, and I don't have a network. I don't have a manageability network in our data center. There is no such thing. So the CM goes to the same floor as any other blade. Is in the data path as any other blade. Now we say security. Yeah, sure. Uh, because. Before you kind of segregate your manageability network from your data network, so it's kind of okay, a little bit secure, uh, although uh, not necessarily right. Um, so maybe, maybe you can argue there's a little bit of compromise security, but actually uh, you will see what we implemented in terms of the security is baked in in the chassis manager. It's not like another one, and we'll, we'll cover that. Um, that's why I said security. So it's secure by design, and we'll cover we'll cover that. Uh, simplicity. So as I said, again, so everything like starting from RS to two for for the connectivity between C and to the blades, down to the actual selection. Yeah. I'm sorry, you, uh, you could segregate if you wanted to. Oh yeah, you could. Yeah, you so could. So the so question right. doesn't make from a cost perspective. It doesn't make because you have 24 blades, we have one neck. Then you have to have you have to aggregate 24 chassis, which means you have to aggregate. Let's say you have four chassis in a rack. You have to aggregate. Six. So normally you have like 64 port manageability. Then you have to aggregate over a wide area and create lots of problems. For us, it's more we just take one, we take the chassis and put it with all the blades and sharing the same thing. And actually, what we do for the 40 gig or even the 10 gig because it's one gig, take one port and you split it essentially over. Like the 40 gig, we take four, split it over 10, 10 to one. So we sacrifice only one port per per rack. Simplicity, I mean, commodity. We just use commodity hardware, uh, whether it's the CPU, uh, whether it's the uh, using IPMI, whether it's um, so anything, anytime, just use whatever is there. Just don't be a mental. Uh, cost efficiency, um, yeah, so it's a, it's a daily, the, the chassis manager itself is really like a small end PC, like Android, which is some Android. Security. So there are multiple places. So the, the, the chassis manager itself, the chassis manager of Strat is running your UFI 2.3, which comes with uh, secure bias. You can sign the bias. You, secure, I mean, uh, you can have secure bias itself. Um, I mean, sorry, secure boot. Right. Uh, but before that, in terms of hardware, we actually have a TPM. We have a TPM, a TPM on the chassis manager itself. Uh, at that time is 1.2, 2.2, I think, maybe EV3 will move to 2.0. 2.0 just, just has been introduced. Um, so UFI 2.3, secure bias, secure boot. Um, all CMs, they, so they run actually, uh, not run any OS, actually, it's run Linux. We run Windows. So we run Windows 2.0. On V2, we, uh, we ship with Windows 12 R2. So it's a full page server. Um, it's a, the, the CM itself is 60, 64 gig. It has 4 gig, 4 gig memory and 64 gig of SSD, small SSD. It's more than enough to run for Windows server. It's a scaled down Windows server. Um, so we run uh, TLS and secure socket on it. Uh, and on top of that, we have actually local roles. And uh, we have users, so and the users can be split in three roles. We implement three three roles there, and I'll talk about it later. Uh, we have notion of admin, operator, which is same of same of kind IPMI, but it's really implemented at a chassis level. So um, admin, operator, and user. Plus, we actually those roles can be local to the CM, as in local users, or you can actually implement them in. Admin. Directory or any Kerberos in a, in a So you can have your own, you can have a centralized active directory where you manage users. And that's how, that's why I say it's security is really top down, it's not, it's not an absolute. Um, yeah. So I covered this, so I went, so the user interface. Um, we added the G, uh, we added the QA enhancements. Uh, the architecture. 
So, so you see, uh, essentially, um, this has not changed much from U1. Um, just stating here, just for the, uh, to be comprehensive. But uh, at the bottom level, we have lots of interfaces. Um, I squared from I squared C to uh, um, to uh, GPIOs, REST, and we use IPMI, uh, and then we use RS232 as well uh, at the very physical level. On top of that, we implemented drivers. So you will see that you will have fan driver, you have a PSU driver, you have power. So for every device, every device that is managed by the TM, there is a driver that uh, associated with that. And on top of that, you have the abstraction, the REST API, which abstracts all, all that functionality. Uh, now, in V2, the, the, the two components, <coughs> the red, and they look in, uh, while I'm talking red here, they look in brown. So uh, those are the two components we added, which is the Digi and the added service, the service, uh, serviceability board, or crash cap. And on top of that, you can have VT100 clients, you can have CLI services, which is a REST-based, um, you can have REST-based clients, essentially. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. This is an example of REST API. So it's just really uh, you can you can either type so uh, this is like a I'm sure if anyone just it up. Yeah. So it's a great uh, you don't forget to play file of the uh, save play one. Uh, and basically what it does is for the, the power uh, and it becomes in a, in a, in a REST packet. Um, so any browser, any, any browser you have should be able to do this. Okay, in terms of what commands, what command classes, so um, we tried in, in the chassis manager, we, are, we did not try to provide every command that's available and that we can can run the chess manager. Obviously, it's a very flexible mechanism. It's, uh, it's running Windows, we can do lots of stuff. However, I think we said any the philosophy going going in to this, we said we're not going to provide everything. Any command that can run in band, let it run in band. Um, so, so essentially, it's a very minimalist approach. So, if you look at the classes of commands, uh, we do soft on off, which is essentially the MC on off power, right? Uh, we we uh, power capping, and there's a there's a tomorrow discussion on power capping. Actually, worked closely with Intel on, on this because there is very platform there is very platform specific things you have to do to enable not the, just the static, even the dynamic aspects of it, uh, the power capping, and that's actually the challenging part. Which is, excuse me, the dynamic part is really challenging. Because you have very strict timing, uh, like 20 milliseconds. That 20 milliseconds, you have if you have power outage and you want to do something, or you have spike in power usage, you have to react within 20 seconds or less. And to do that, you have to have end to end from the motherboard, from the CPU all the way up to the chassis. You have to account for lots of it. So we added power capping, dynamic and static. Um, of course, LED, and this is very important for operations. When you have cracks and racks of, of blades and one goes bad, you have to make sure to help the technician who is moving in the corridor and then the call or the roll to make sure which, which blade to look at. And basically, you just set an and light LED on, you understand that that's blade. So, and it doesn't pull the wrong one. Uh, blade health. So essentially through uh, blade status, blade uh, essentially DIM, CPU, HMT, PCI, and this is for diagnostics and, and for uh, essentially technician. So before you, if you have a if you have a bad DIM, you want to understand which DIM is bad uh, before you even go and, 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 and go to the floor and fix it. And you should be able to go to the CM, give me all the DIMs, dump, dump, uh, dump all the DIM information. Tell us which DIM, what the manufacturer, and it tells you whether it's good or bad. A serial console for debugging, and then boot order. Um, the, the boot order essentially, again, is for really operation. 
aspects. Uh, sometimes if the disk goes bad or he wants to do Pixie Boot versus hard drive boot or he want to Pixie it on a USB or something, you should be able to do it with just memory. Okay. Yeah. So we added we added a command in the uh, yeah, this is essentially the one we added here. These are all in band. The, the blue ones are out of band. This is out of band, but added in the. We added actually a through read write. And, and uh, you won't believe it that one of when you have millions and millions of servers, keeping track of, keeping track of your servers in terms of asset management, it's not just for you to, to see what you have, it's for the IRS. It's because you have to be able to demo. They come to you and say, show me the server. Because, because you have to write off. It's a capital investment, right? No finance discussion here. But anything you buy, you get tax break on it because it's capital investment. Okay? And then you write it off over three years. Now, Uncle Sam will come and says, hey, I'm giving you lots of tax breaks, so show me show me server XYZ, right? Because I want to make sure that you, you it's just like a random server, right? You have to be able to walk in and say, this is a So tracking assets. It's, it's, a, it's a huge uh, task to jump. We added this command essentially to give flexibility to our finance guys to be able to write any information you want in any blade you want to keep track of that ad, those assets. So essentially this is a place where through where you can actually store anything you want. Uh, like people who work in corporations, you know, your laptop, there is, a, there is an asset ID on it, right? You can put the asset ID. So it's a it's a x number of bytes where they can put anything. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Blade Health is kind of uh, so for for us Blade Health is is essentially um, hard drives. So for example, the hard drives for non the non. Uh, the non-HBA attached drives, right? We actually can, you can actually uh, figure out that this drive is offline or online. Uh, for the DIMs, right? You can actually figure out that this DIM here is, is being used and it's configured or not. So for example, the operating system can, or the UFI actually before you the operating system. You can go and try to train the DIM, and when it doesn't train, just, you just ignore it, keep going. Right? So you just take it offline, right? So it's not, Health is, is a very huge topic, right? But it, it essentially gives you very basic information that, hey, this, this is okay or not okay. Uh, more, yeah, more basic. Uh, of, of course, if you want to go deeper, there is we have the system event log part of that. So you can actually get system event log. It tells you this DM is online, but it has lots of single bit errors, lots of double bit errors, and so on. But it's a, it's a very basic story. Uh, same thing with fans. You can get fans so like chassis health, right? It gives you fan status, like fans are running normal or not, the SU are running normal or not, so there's a lot of basic information. Okay. At the chassis level, so um, yeah, so same thing. So at the chassis, keep in mind the chassis is managed by the uh, by the CN. So chassis information it tells you what plays, J bots, and uh, and compute. Uh, tells you the fans, the PSUs, um, again, so that's information. But also it tells you the chassis health. It will tell you the plague is online offline, powered on, powered off. Uh, it will tell you the fans are normal or not, or, or fail, fail your phone, PSUs. Um, we have a chassis, uh, chassis log. Uh, yeah, so chassis log, it, uh, it, it keeps the uh, error logs and the other user logs, tracking log. Uh, LEDs from the chassis. So the chassis, like the blade, the LED on the back actually has two, two lights and keeps track. If there is an upper light that is green and amber, amber means attention is required. Like if there's a bad, bad fan or bad PSU, yes, you'll see the amber light is on. And chassis user management. So add user, remove user, change password. So it's like a basic, basic uh, security uh, user management. And uh, next, get and set. And uh, so these are all administrative tasks, essentially, for the chassis. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are those done through IPMI? Uh, through REST. 
Uh, keep in mind, we don't actually, uh, maybe we cover it here if we have time, but in the IPMI, we don't even enforce, there is no security enforcement in IPMI. Because the security is, is, is enforced at the, at the CM level, right? Because that's the entity, there is no way you can enter, there is no way you can enter the command, IPMI command without them coming to the CM, right? Or, or in band, right? Now, if you come in band, to execute an IPMI command, you have to have administrative access anyway. So if somebody hacks the server and gets admin access, it's too late. Even if you have IPMI user role or whatever, it's pretty much, you have admin rights, you can you can shut down the server, you can delete everything, right? So it's kind of, uh, okay, so once the thief is inside the house, there's little you can. Um, so there are two more commands to the chassis. So we added asset management also. So we added asset management to the blade. We added asset management to the chassis as well. And the PDB. So the PDB in, 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 in this context is the power distribution. So because it's a, it has its own its own tracking assets, so we, we also store so information. JBOR, JBOR did not change from V1, so it's the same. I think you are of the uh, info uh, and health uh, and serial concept for the JBOR. So actually, it's interesting here. So you can actually open a console and do firmware update interactively to the most most JBoss like LSI, I mean uh, extender extender guides. They provide uh, a console with them with their uh, extender, so you can update firmware, you can dump logs, you can do lots of things. The command line. Uh, it's pretty much the syntax is the same, but we had a lot of commands related to uh, um, related to the new features we talked about. Um, so, like like uh, writing through data, reading, writing through. Uh, so, so it's different, but the syntax is pretty much the same. Yeah. So I think. What we did, we added for VT100 compatibility. Uh, these are the UX enhancement uh, function keys, tab, command history. So the rest is as a wiring diagram. This is more of a, kind of how do we wire the PDM. It's a Microsoft specific. It's on the slides. Um, I exceeded already the time. So, but if you, if you have any questions, I'll. I'll publish this uh, things, and if you have any questions, send me email. Okay. Any any questions? And the source code, by the way, as again, so it's all on GitHub. Um, it's very it's a some MIT source license, so feel free read it. Uh, what the reason we put it there is really wanna uh, we wanna spur uh, a community type of environment where. You can, if you want to develop, extend your own hardware, you can use it and, and you are for free. Uh, uh, if you want to add features that you can, back in, you can do it and something it back. So essentially, it's, it's a way to essentially create a community around this. The kit, which tomorrow Joe Jones will talk about, is also on, uh, in, the, in the GitHub, the OCP GitHub. Okay, any questions? All right. If there's no question, then we'll take a break, 2 o'clock, and we are Michael. All right.